Hey guys, Josh here and welcome back to Rune Factory 5 and today we're gonna be talking about skills. So in this game there are so many different skills. So there are weapon skills, there's farming, crafting, cooking, there's even things like sleeping, walking, bathing, and so many different skills and they're all useful. Most of them are pretty straightforward and they will increase naturally just by playing the game. However, there are some skills that you might want to increase a little bit more than other skills and that you might want to just focus on a little bit. For example, some skills are necessary in order to learn the new crafting recipes and other skills will boost certain stats that you might find important. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the most important skills and the ones that have tips or tricks in order to increase them faster. But before we jump into any specific skill, I would like to show you an item that you should craft as soon as you can because it's gonna help you a lot. So you're gonna need a crafting station. You go into accessories. It's a level 40 recipe and it's the heart pendant. And what the heart pendant does is that it doubles the skill experience that you get. However, it can be a little bit tricky to craft. So first it requires a silver pendant, it's a level 20 recipe and you just need silver. I'm gonna show you some footage of where you can get the silver, but you can get it pretty early. And the other item that you need is the tricky one, and that's the love crystal. So there's two ways to get the love crystal as far as I know. So you can get it from the pixies and they appear in the dungeon called Eternal Darkness. The name might be slightly different in the final translation of the game when it comes out in English. So it should be something like Eternal Darkness. On the second floor, you're gonna see these red fairies, the pixies. And they have a slim chance of dropping these love crystals, so if you can get it from them, that's good. The other way to get it is from Heinz. So if your friendship with Heinz is level 5 or higher, and you speak with him on your birthday, he's gonna give you a love crystal. So make sure you speak with him every day, so that by the time your birthday comes in the first year, you can get the love crystal for free. And what you should do with your first love crystal, don't rush and craft the heart pendant right away. Actually put it in the shipping bin, just sell it. And then afterwards, if you go to the crystal shop, you're gonna be able to buy it back from Heinz. And it's just 2000 G each and he's gonna have them in the store. So they're really, really easy to get once you've shipped the first one. Now let's talk about the weapon skills. So there are many different types of weapons in Rune Factory and they all have their own skills. So there's one handed swords, two handed swords, spears, axe and hammers, jaw swords, as well as fists. And even if you're planning on focusing on just one weapon type, as you can see, my jaw sword skill is at level 90. But it's still good to level up everything because it will increase your maximum RP. And that's the case for most skills in this game. They're all going to increase your maximum RP. So you'll want to level up all of your skills even if you don't think they're really important. And so each skill is also going to reduce the consumption of RP for that specific weapon type and increase the damage you're dealing with that weapon type. So they're gonna increase in combat just by fighting some monsters. But there's one thing you can do to level up those skills extremely fast and that's with these punching bags. So you can buy these at Studio Palmo and for maximum efficiency, you should use nine of them. So you have to buy them one by one. They're 8,000 each. So if you're just starting and you don't have too much money, like you can start with one or two, three, four, but if you have enough money, you should definitely buy nine. Since furniture can't be carried in your inventory, at first it can be a bit time consuming if you wanna buy the nine punching bags, but just keep in mind you can have one delivered to your farm dragon, one delivered to your house, and one here. So usually I would buy the three of them at the same time and then I would move them in my house. And you just do that three times. It's gonna take a little while, but soon enough you're gonna have these nine punching bags. And then you press on the right thumbstick to lock on the center. And let's just see how much experience I have right now with Jewel Sword, so I'm level 90 at 1%. And then you just smash the B button. Most of the time you're gonna hit the nine punching bags at the same time. And that's really gonna give you a lot of experience very quickly. It's been maybe a little bit less than 30 seconds now. Let's take a look. As you can see, I'm already at 22%. So it goes up very quickly. So that's what I would recommend doing for leveling up your weapon skills. There's another type of weapon I have not talked about yet, and that's the staff. So this one does not have just one skill. It actually depends on the elemental skills. So if you want to level up your elemental skills, you can either just use the staff and 
hit those punching bags with your magic or you can use your magical abilities for example like this one just keep in mind that if you're using your abilities you don't actually need to hit the punching bags you can just do them randomly like this like on the wall or something and it's gonna give you the same experience uh, if you're in your house just be careful because you can actually break your furniture your elemental skills are also going to increase a little bit when you do your farm work for example the fire skill when you craft or upgrade equipment you're gonna get a little bit of experience water skill by fishing or using your watering can the earth skill by tilling the soil the wind skill by using your sickle to cut grass or crap the light skill while harvesting your crops, the dark skill if you use some products or fertilizer, anything you put on your soil, any product you put on your soil that's gonna give you some experience. And the love skill is by planting seeds and also using the healing spell. So that's pretty much it for the elemental skills. So now before we start talking about the cooking, crafting, chemistry and forging, which are pretty much I would say the most important skills, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some that are a bit less important. If you're really bored, one skill you can easily increase is the throwing skill. So this one, when you level it up, it will increase your strength, your vitality, and also the amount of damage you do when throwing items. So usually it would go up simply by throwing items like this. One thing you can do is when you harvest your crops, instead of just putting them in the shipping bin, you can lock on the shipping bin and you can throw your crops like this. But there's one quick way to increase that skill. So you have to come beside Martin and Cecil's house near that cliff right here. And let's just see how is my skill doing right now. So I'm at 17%. So you can see here the bottom of the rock is kind of like U-shaped. So you just come a little bit left, a little bit on the left side right here and you just hold up on the thumbstick and you press A multiple times like this and uh, it's gonna look like not much is happening uh, you just keep pressing A again and again and again like this and now let's take a look at my skill so I'm already at 70 so let's just wait until I level up and let's see how long it takes so you can do this if you're extremely bored maybe if you're watching a movie at the same time or watching some videos or something uh, I wouldn't recommend you're gonna get bored pretty quickly of this, but if you're doing something else at the same time, it can be kind of just a neat little trick to know, I guess. So let's see. So I'm at 87 right now, I think I'm gonna give up. But yep, that's one thing you should know for this little skill. Next there's the bathing skill, and this one is pretty important because it increases your max HP, RP and your vitality. And it's gonna go up every time you take a bath. The only issue is that um, usually the bath is supposed to be open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. But a lot of the time Murakumo is not there but there he is now so you can take a bath. And it's 500 G every time. However at the beginning of the game pretty early you're gonna get the beginner's mark. And if you equip that mark until level 20 you're gonna be able to get baths for free. So I would recommend taking a lot of bats in the beginning of the game before you reach level 20. Next I would like to briefly talk about the sleeping skill. So this skill will increase pretty much every time you go to bed and it will increase your maximum HP, maximum RP, strength, vitality and intelligence. And I would like to clear up some misinformation about this skill. So in Rune Factory 4 you had to go to bed before a certain time in order to increase that skill. And even for Rune Factory 5, there's a lot of websites and even the official Japanese guide for Rune Factory 5 will tell you that you need to go to bed before 1am if you want to get experience in that skill. But I found out that at least as of version 1.1.1 of the game, that's not true at all. So I'm just gonna wait until 5.30 just for fun. So let's take a look at my sleeping skill right now. So I'm level 70 at 40%. All right, so it's now 5.30. Let's sleep and see what happens. So I woke up at six and we're on the same day on the 20th. So I really just slept 30 minutes. And if I take a look at my sleeping skill, I'm at 50%, so I gained 10%. And it's always 10%, so if I go to bed right now and I sleep until tomorrow. So we're now on the 21st, 6 a.m. I slept 24 hours. And my sleeping skill is, 
at 60%, so I got 10%. Yeah, I just wanted to clear that up because a lot of people seem confused about this, but pretty much you can go to bed at any time. You're always going to wake up at 6 and you're going to get the same amount of sleeping experience. So if you want to get the most out of your day, just go to bed as late as possible. And yeah, so that's it for the sleeping skill. All right, so now let's get into the very fun stuff. I'm going to be talking about the cooking, chemistry, forging and crafting skills. These skills are capped to level 99 compared to most other skills which are capped at 999 and you really want to level up these skills as much as possible because that's what's gonna allow you to learn new recipes. So I'm gonna show you how I increase those skills and the first thing you want to do is make sure your backpack is empty and the bigger your backpack is the easier the process is gonna be. And before we start cooking, crafting, brewing potions and all of that, you're gonna need some items. You can use any items for this, so if you have weeds or if you have failed recipes, if you have object X, any items you don't need, you can use that. But if you don't have anything to start with, you can just go to the general store and buy some turnip seeds. Because turnip seeds are the cheapest item. And also, this is the hot hot fruit. We're gonna use this a little bit later, but you can unlock the seed for this crop. After you completed the request that will ask you to ship a level 10 crop. So make sure you always use your sickle on some of your crops to get a higher level seed. So you can get level 10 crops as soon as possible and you can get the hot hot fruits as soon as possible. And you'll understand why in a few minutes. And as I said I want my inventory to be empty. So I'm gonna put all of the turnip seeds I just bought. I'm gonna put them in my box. So for cooking, what you want to do at first, so you've got all of the different cooking appliances. You want to find the highest level recipe that you actually know. All right, so I found this yaki udon recipe. It's a level 95 recipe with the frying pan, but just take whichever highest recipe you have. And we actually don't want to make this recipe. So I'm gonna put some turnip seeds, but as I said, you can use any ingredients and then just do as much as you can. So that's why you want your backpack to be empty because these are gonna go in your backpack. And if you have the biggest one, the maximum is gonna be 75. So you may have noticed that I got quite a bit of experience. Uh, let's pay closer attention to the next one. So I'm level 76 at 81%. So we're gonna make the Yaki Udon one more time, but now you can see that in my backpack, I have 75 failed recipes, so I can't do anything else because my backpack is full. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put all of my failed recipes in my fridge. So just make sure you have enough space in your fridge to do this. And now instead of using the turnip seeds, I'm gonna recycle my failed dishes. So pretty much I'm gonna use failed dishes to make other failed dishes. So let's just do this. All right, so 75 more. So I went from level 76 at 81%, I think I was, and now I'm 77, 59%. So I'm getting almost a whole level pretty much every time I do this. And then I just put everything back in the fridge. And now we're about to face some problem. So if I try to do this a third time, you'll notice I only have 179 RP left. And what happens in Rune Factory if you try to craft a recipe and you don't have any RP? Actually, whenever you try to do something and you don't have enough RP, it's actually going to consume your HP and you're going to die. So one thing you can do, you can actually craft some real recipes such as hot milk, which is going to give you quite a lot of RP. So you can make some real recipes in between and eat some good stuff. But I've got an easier way for you. So you're going to need the chemistry set. And it's a level 65 recipe, so until you're able to do that recipe, I would recommend, as I just said, to make some hot milk or some other food that's gonna replenish your RP. This recipe, that's the form you aid, and this one requires the hot hot fruit, which I talked about, and you're gonna want to make a level 10 form you aid. If it's level one, level nine, that's not gonna work. It needs to be level 10. So if you have a level 10 hot hot fruit, you're gonna get level 10 right away. But this one that I have is level 1, so I'm just gonna add an extra item. So I've got some medicinal herb here that's level 10, so I'm just gonna add one herb and one fruit. So I've got my form you aid. Let's take a look at it. 
So as you can see, and this is the important information here, so it actually reduces my maximum HP by 100%. And that's why you need this item to be level 10. If it's level 1, it's gonna be minus 50%. If it's level 9, I think it's gonna be 90%. But you really want it to be 100%. And let's take a look at my HP now. So I've got 19,000. And let's take a look at my HP after drinking this. So I'm at 1 out of 1. And let's go back to our cooking. So I'm just gonna do these a couple of times until I don't have any more RP. We're going to end up with some super filled dishes. So uh, I would recommend maybe just redoing it with the turnip seeds or other random items from time to time. Just if you want to be able to do 75 dishes every time. Because as you can see right now I can only make 56 because I only have 56 failed dishes, right? Alright, so now I've got only 97 RP left, and usually that would cause me some pretty big problems because, well, I would pretty much die or lose a lot of HP, and I wouldn't be able to continue cooking. However, because of the form you ate, my HP is still at 1 out of 1, so you're gonna be able to continue crafting and cooking and do all of your stuff, and your HP is not gonna go down to 0. Just keep in mind you can exploit this for crafting, but if you go in combat, uh, everybody's gonna kill you in one shot pretty much. Another little tip for cooking is that if there's a recipe that you can actually make, such as this pineapple juice that I'm making right now, it's going to give you a lot more experience than failed dishes. So if there's a high level recipe and you have a lot of ingredients, then I would definitely recommend doing that. And just keep in mind with the formulaid, you still need to respect the limit of RP that you have, otherwise your recipe is gonna fail. So for example, my maximum RP is 2000, so if I try to craft 4 pineapple juices, I'm gonna fail them. So I can make them, for example, 3 at a time right now, and I'm succeeding, so I'm just doing that like this, and I'm gaining a lot of experience. So for chemistry, it's pretty much the same thing, just find the highest level recipe. And to get started, I'm gonna use my turnip seeds again. But I could use anything, right? So if you have lots of like scrap metals or lots of grass or, you know, anything you don't want to use, feel free to use whatever you'd like. And what's fun with chemistry is that your object X actually stack as opposed to the failed dishes that didn't stack. So they were filling up my inventory every time and then I had to put them back in the fridge and do the same thing over and over again. But for this one, they don't really take a lot of space in my bag and I just reuse the same ones, right? And also there's no other variations of Object X, so you always get the exact same thing. So I can just do this over and over again until, until I'm bored, basically, because I'm not gonna die because of my formulaid. So I don't have to worry about my RP and I don't have to worry about my inventory space, so yeah, just keep doing this. I would also recommend to have a few recipe breads on you when you do this, because most likely than not, if you're leveling up very quickly like this, you're gonna be able to learn higher level recipes, which are gonna give you more experience. All right, so for forging and crafting, it's pretty much the same thing, so I'm gonna go over it pretty quickly. So you just try to find like a highest level weapon or armor, and you're gonna get scrap metal out of the failed recipes that you make here. So I'm just gonna use the scrap metal. I'm gonna make 75 of them just like this. You just keep doing that and you're gonna level up your forging skills pretty quickly. One thing that some people like to do but I don't find it as efficient, you can craft a lot of random items. For example, you could craft a lot of broadswords and you could just upgrade them, just put a random item and upgrade them so each item can be upgraded like 10 times but honestly i find that the easiest way is really just like this just pick a high level recipe just put some scrap metal and just repeat the process over and over and last we've got a crafting so i feel like i don't need to show you at this point you guys know how it works you just pick any recipe you put whatever you want in it so let's we use the same scrap metal that we use for our forging and you get scrap metal for this as well so that's pretty simple so that's pretty much it for cooking chemistry 
crafting and foraging. So if you use these techniques, it's gonna be very fast, especially if you're using the farm you aid. So the last skills I would like to talk about are the status resistance. So there's poison, seal paralysis, sleep, fatigue, sickness, and knockout. So these skills are going to increase your resistance to these status. So they're pretty useful to have. So the way to increase these skills is either by being afflicted from one of these status effects by an enemy or by afflicting one of these status effects to an enemy. In Rune Factory 4, what you could do, you could drink Object X because if you guys don't know, if you drink Object X, which is the failed potion, it's gonna afflict you with all of the status effects. However, in Rune Factory 5, as of version 1.0.3, it's not something that happens anymore. So if you drink Object X, or even if you throw Object X to an enemy, it's still gonna afflict all of the status effects, but it's not gonna have any influence on your skill levels. So I don't know if it's intentional or if it's a bug, but it's okay because I've got a workaround. Actually, I've got an even better solution. So we're gonna have to go see some enemies and I just want to get rid of my farm raid, so I'm just gonna go to sleep. Alright, so it's now the next day, and my HP is back to normal. So to do this next thing that we want to do, we're gonna go right in this area. And we're gonna be looking for the Siren. And she has a pretty low spawn rate, so she doesn't always appear if she's not... Oh, there she is, but... If she's not here, you can just go back until all the monsters disappear and then you can come back. And we need Melody Bottles from her. So you can try with the Seed Circle like this. And as you can see, I got one right here. So this is the item that you want. That's the Melody Bottle. So now I'm gonna kill her. And I might get another one. No, so I just got one. So I'm just gonna go back further away so the monsters all disappear and then I come back so you just do this back and forth until you find another siren all right so I've got another one right here so I got one bottle and I got another bottle here so I'm already at three all right so now we're gonna make some weapon and every time you want to craft something that's a little bit elaborate in this game, I would highly recommend to save just in case you mess something up, which I do quite a lot. Alright, so now I'm going to be making some weapon. So I'm going to make a dual sword, but you can use any type of weapon that you'd like. So pretty much what the melody bottles do is that they have a 10% chance of inflicting every status effect, except for a knockout. This one is just a 1%. And I'm gonna keep it simple in terms of uh, crafting, but if I'm not wrong, in Rune Factory 5, every weapon can inherit traits from three different items. So I could add up to three melody bottles, and it's gonna add up to a 30% chance of inflicting the different status effects. If I were to add a fourth one, it wouldn't add up to 40%. However, later what you can do, you're gonna unlock this item called the Tenfold Steel or the double fold steel and with that you're gonna be able to amplify the effects of these and there's probably gonna be another video explaining how to get the double fold and the tenfold steel in Run Factory 5 but honestly 30% is way more than enough so we're just gonna craft this weapon and let's take a look at it so as you can see I've got a 30% chance of inflicting every status effect and a 3% chance for knockout so I'm gonna take that with me and then you just need to go find some monsters. So there are some monsters that are resistant to status effects, but it's gonna work on most of them. So yeah, so you just hit them. And as you can see, every hit, I'm giving them like two or three status effects. And just by doing this, you're gonna level up all of your resistance to status effects. All right, so that's most of it. Most of my tips in order to increase some of your skills very quickly in Rune Factory 5. Most of the other skills will increase pretty naturally. However, there's another way to increase all of your skills pretty much at the same time, all while making a lot of money, and that's with the pineapples. So it's gonna take a little while before you unlock the pineapple seeds. You'll be able to buy them from the store after you finish a request, asking you to harvest a giant crop. So make sure you do your requests as soon as you can. And after that, you're gonna unlock the pineapple seeds. And so in Rune Factory 5, sometimes, just like in Rune Factory 4, 
when you harvest crops. Sometimes you're gonna get these orbs that level up a random skill. And with the pineapples, as you can see, like almost for every pineapple, I get one of these orbs and they level up one of my skills. So these can level up any skill, so it's completely random. And the good thing with pineapple, so not only will you get a ton of orbs, but also they grow back in like one or two days, depending on the quality of your soil and the season. So they grow best in summer, but we're in fall right now and they grow like every two days on my field. So this is a really good way of getting lots of skills every day. So if you always have a field of pineapples, as you can see, I just have like a small little area but eventually i would like to have this whole field just with pineapples so i can pick these up every day and get lots of skills and also quite a bit of money the only inconvenience with pineapples is that especially if you harvest them every day the health of your soil is gonna go down very quickly and so after a few harvests your pineapples might die unless you really pay attention to them so just take a look at the health of your soil and it's a good idea to always have a stock of either like withered grass or corn or four clover leaves so as you can see here i have lots of four clover leaves so you just put them on your soil everywhere and then you tilt them with the hoe and it's gonna restore the health of your soil so just make sure to pay extra attention to your soil if you're planting some pineapples but yeah guys so these are pretty much all of my tips for increasing your skills in rune factory 5 let me know if you do have any questions i'm gonna be keeping an eye out for the comments and i'm gonna answer them so also please feel free to let me know what kind of rune factory 5 content or tips and tricks you'd like to see in the future and make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out and i'll see you all in the next video